we're just building up our knowledge here and doing review and you know taking it slow and and uh, making sure that we have the pieces we need to continue to move forward so the handler interface somebody tell it back to me you know you're sick of it good because I want you to, like if a police officer pulls you over and ma'am have you been drinking I had a couple of beers ma'am have you been drinking yes officer I've had a couple of beers can you tell me the handler interface so if an officer pulls you over and asks you, what's the handler interface? Okay, ma'am, here's your license. Carry on. Be on your way. I once had a police officer pull me over and said, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, because uh, I swerved a little bit over the yellow line. Wrong answer. Okay. So when a police officer asks you a question like, do you know why I pulled you over? You say, no, officer, I don't. Why? Let's try it again. Do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, no, officer, I don't. Why? Because your tail light's out. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> you been drinking tonight, son? Yeah, I had one beer. All right, well, get home safe and fix that tail light. <laughs> we'll do, officer, thanks. So did you tell him he had a beer? Yeah. And did you breathalyze you to see if he had more than a beer? No, because it only been a beer. I don't know. So we're getting the foundation. So handler interface, serve HTTP, response writer, pointer to request, just solid in your head. Anything has that method, it's also of type handler. Hey, baby, you got this method, you're my type. That's an interface, right? The interface is just defining, you know, kind of like you have these methods, then you're that type also. And that allows us to do polymorphism because, you know, we create a type and it's type hot dog, but it has that method attached to it. Then it's also type handler and listen to serve once a handler so we can pass in that the value of that type, right? Hot dog, handler, whatever. That might not make any sense to people in internet land watching this video. So uh, that was uh, the handler interface and listen and serve takes a handler. And then we also saw we could do some basic routing. Request is a struct, right? HTTP request. Request is a struct and it's got... Um, different fields. One of those fields is the URL field. And the URL field is also a struct and it has a path. So we could do request.url.path and then we could say here's the path and we could switch on that. So we could say switch request URL path and then we could say case forward slash dog case forward slash cat and we could have code that runs based upon what path we go to. That's a router, that's a mux, that's a multiplexer, whatever you want to call it. All those words are interchangeable. And so then we saw, okay, so instead of just using handle, which takes a, and then we saw instead of doing routing with that, correct, just doing that review, you guys picturing it in your head, instead of doing routing that way, we could create a serve mux, and if we create a new serve mux, it's got the method serve HTTP response writer pointer to request, which means it implements the handler interface, which means we could pass that serve mux into listen and serve. And servemux also has two methods attached to it, handle and handle func. Handle takes a route and a handler. Handle func takes a route and a function that has the two parameters, response writer and pointer to request. So by and large, we're going to use listen and serve, right? And then we're going to use handle funks. And the handle funks, so we'll use handle func, and it'll be the route and then a, a function, foo. And then we go and we define that function, func foo, response writer pointer to request, right? And, uh, and then the other piece is instead of creating our own serve mux, we just use default serve mux. And with default serve mux, uh, we pass nil to listen and serve. And then we use handle and handle func that's at the HTTP package level, not attached to the type pointer to serve mux. We use handle and handle func. So we just use handle func at the HTTP level and, and we use nil for our default serve mux, which gives us default serve mux. So that is like this. Listen and serve, nil, we're using the default serve mux, HTTP handle, let me do this one, HTTP handle func, and here we have a function with response writer and pointer to request. That's it. Okay. Uh, No, it's preferable to do this. Rather than case? Yeah. 
because case, I mean, is not as elegant, right? If we look back here, understanding, routing, switch, case. But yeah, so does this. You know, we just keep adding more handle funks. So that's the best way to do it then. That's the best way to do it. You gotta kind of better than case. Oh yeah. And I always get case and switch mixed up, so sorry, I think I said that wrong. Switch request URL path case. Case makes sense. It's this case or that case. So what what is there a situation when you wouldn't use switch rather than that? Or no. Yeah, the routing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's. I'm just kind of like, oh, just kind of like building up, right? Yeah, thank you, Ken. So here's uh, Julian Schmidt. And if we go and we look at Julian Schmidt's router, so godoc.org, right? We could look for stuff, like we could look for router. And so here's Gorilla Mux, Julian Schmidt HTTP router. Mux is a multiplexer, HTTP router is a multiplexer, Mux is an HTTP router, HTTP router is a Mux, it's just different words for the same thing, okay? So we look at Julian Schmidt's router, and I like that way better over Gorilla. And if you look at, uh, you could even look for Julian Schmidt benchmark, and here's HTTP routing benchmark where he compares Gorilla Mux with HTTP serve Mux, which is his. No, his is HTTP router. And I think this is the default library. Like how much memory do they take? Gorilla Mux is pretty huge. His is pretty light. Here's, I think that's the default. That's pretty light. But look at how heavy Gorilla is. Right? And then we look at speed. Here's HTTP serve Mux, the default one. Here's HP router, his, and uh, 15, 15 nanoseconds per operation, 15,000 nanoseconds, 706,000 nanoseconds per, per, per operation. Uh, where's Gorilla? Gorilla, 1,763,690 nanoseconds per operation. Whoa, that's slow. So a lot of people like HTTP router by Julian Schmidt because it's got some cool functionality and it's fast. And he's, I don't know what he did to make it so fast. Probably something not too legal. <laughs> uh, so to use Julian Schmidt's router, how would we use it? Well, the first thing I do is I go and I look at the index and see what kind of insights I could get from that. Okay, new router. Well, that's cool. That kind of looks like new serve mux, right? And you need to know... Router, mux, multiplexer, all those terms are interchangeable. So when you hear server, server, router, multiplexer, mux, all interchangeable. So here I, I get, you know, new and I get a pointer to router. And look what we have here, boys and girls. What's that tell you? Why is that like a magic method to be attached to a pointer to a router? Say it. Say it. Say it. It's a handler. Why? Why is it the handler interface? You guys are in the second row, so I'll go easy on you. You want a little less interaction, I can tell. In the second row. <laughs> handler interface, right? Requires you to have that method, serve HTTP response writer pointer to request. That means anything that takes a handler, like listen and serve, you could pass this into. Cool, so I'm going to create my router. I'm going to be able to pass it into listen and serve. And it has both handle and hand, he calls it handler funk. You know, in the documentation, it's handle funk, but he calls it handler funk. Okay. All right, but that's the one that takes it. Here he has an HTTP handler funk. I don't know. We got handle, which takes a method, a path, and a handle. Handler, method, path, handler, handle, and ha handle, handle, handler, handler. So, you know, whoa, too many handles gets confusing. You start saying that too fast. Maybe look at type handle. Is a funk that looks like this. 
So let's see how we use it. So we can look at the examples, or we could just come look at my example. Here's my example. Lots of routes. So if you're building this as like a project, you might extract all those routes into another function and just call it init, right? Like this is like init app or something where it just, you know, puts all that code over into another little function. You see what I'm talking about? You might do this. You might do all this, right? You might say func, sorry, you might do init routes and you pass in a mux, not a max. <laughs> and then you could have func init routes and that takes in a mux and it's going to be a mux is what type? It is a pointer to a router. And so it's a pointer to a HTTP router router. Because from this package, this router, right, that's what new gives us. Uh, HTTP new, HTTP handler new gives us a pointer to a router. There we go. All right, so it gave us a pointer to a router. So we do that. And I just initialize all those. Right, so it's a little bit cleaner. And if I wanted to, I could extract this a little bit more. And I could put this over into another file. And I could put all these over into other files. So I could just modularize it. Does that make sense? I'm going to put all this back. So if I go to forward slash index, forward slash I get index, and that's going to be uh, index, it's response writer, a request, and parameters. So this mux.get takes a path and a handle. And a handle is a func with a response writer, request, and params. Okay. And so it looks like that. So then I just execute my template, w this, nil data, and then I handle my error. And I just created a little function down here, handle error, which takes the writer and the error, and it checks the error. So all that code just got, instead of being three, one, two, three, four lines on every one of these, it got turned into one line. Follow. Just a little modularizing the code. And, uh, and so, you know, index, about, contact, apply, apply process. And then I could start to pass in variable names. So let's just look at that. And we will run this, and it's uh, 21. Pretty cool, right? So we could have done this with, you know, not just going to all those different pages. And we could have done this with, um, I don't know what I'm saying. We could have done this with the default serve mux just as easily. And that's going to be our exercise now that I say it. Thriller. When you laugh like that, you gotta say thriller now, and then start singing. Da -da -da -da. So, we looked at all these routes. Let's look at the user route. User forward slash something. User forward slash McLeod. User McLeod. So it took this and turned it into a variable. How would you do that if we weren't using Julian Schmitz? So if we're just using standard library and default serve mux and the request and the report response writer, right? How would you do that?
Well, you'd have to parse your path. How do you get your path? Request dot what? Dot URL dot path, right? And then we'd have our path, and then we could say, hey, break this up by the forward slashes. So, you know, look into our strings package and see if there's some way that we could parse that and just get the words out. And then I could say, okay, I want to just show this right here now. Whatever is in that spot, that index position. So parse fields, I think. Strings parse fields might do it. Go doc forward slash strings and parse. Nothing. I don't know where that is. Fields. Let's see if fields is in here. Fields, that's all we need. All right, so fields. Fields funk splits the, here we go. Fields splits the string S around each instance of one or more white space. Fields funk splits string at each run of Unicode code point C satisfying C. That gets a little bit more involved. Maybe split. So split will take a string and a separator and give you a slice of strings. So split now slices S into substring separated by sep. All right, so forward slash here and returns a slice of substring. So it would just give me the all those words in the path in a slice, and I could say give me the one in this position, and then put that out as a variable. That's pretty cool. So I could also do blog category article, just because that's put in here. Blog. Yeah, blog category would be like uh, travel, Hawaii. All right, read category, travel, what read article Hawaii and you have these things here where you could specify the method so those are the things which are kind of novel and nice about HP router is I could say method get or method post so now to run this code it has to be the get method and at this path to run this code it has to be the apply method and, and, and it has to be the post method and at that path so if I do git apply, I run this code, and if I do post at this URL, I run that code. The the what? The the user this one? Oh yeah, for sure. So let's go look at those and see how those work. So you uh, have this extra parameters, and here I was throwing them away with the blank identifier. But here I'm assigning them to PS parameters, and I'm saying give them to me by name. And so the name corresponds to, it might be better if I had these up here. Let me get these next to each other. And I don't have anything to post an article, but so that will never run. So here we have user. And name, and so that becomes the field right there that I'm accessing, or the identifier I'm accessing. So if you looked into this, you know, by name is taking in a string and then ranging, and params is a slice of param. I don't know. So if you look into it, he does it pretty much like I was just talking about. And I don't know why he doesn't use a map, was my thought when I looked at that. But anyhow. So it's just, just illustrating the takeaway from this, two things. The takeaway is uh, the handler deal. HP knew, right, when we looked at the documentation for that. Gives us a pointer to router. It has this method, which means it's a handler, which means we could pass it into listen and serve. So we get a new router. This is a both, you know, pointer to an HTTP router dot router, Julian Schmidt's package HTTP router type router, and a pointer to it. So we could pass in, and it, it's also type handler since it has the serve HTTP response writer pointer to request. So we could pass it in as a handler to listen and serve, and then it has the get and post methods attached to it, get and post. 
And those take a path and a handle. And then the handle is just a function with a response writer and a pointer to request and params. All right, and we can see what params are. Params is a slice of param. A param is a key value. All right, so you store and all that stuff. Anyhow, the main point being is, oh, cool, that's a handler. I can pass it into listen and serve. All right, and then you could kind of fool around with different packages and see how they fit together. Oh, I could use Julian Schmidt's router instead of the default serve mux. And it's got a little bit of different functionality. Um, and now the other thing which is cool is I want you to take this handle funk and I'm gonna copy this code right here and put it up here and make it 28 exercise nice that's 28 exercise nice and then I'm gonna come down get Julian Schmidt all that and these and I'm just going to change uh, we're not going to use those because those are specific to him and we're going to get rid of all these. And let's see. We've got index, about, contact, apply, apply process. And we have index, about, apply, apply process, and contact contact and then we are handling the error in kind of an extracted way I'll bring in the log package for you right and we'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of these what example am I in is that the nice example I have no idea why that code was there and we'll get rid of these all right so I'm going to push this. And I want you to go into the LangWeb dev. And if you haven't starred this yet, make sure you star it. And uh, then go into zero zero temp, go to twenty eight exercise, name dot go, and you can click raw. What? That's what happened to you guys, huh? You're like, wait, where is it? Twenty eight exercise, nice. I've got two of them. How did I do that? Twenty nine exercise nice, and uh, however you want to copy this code, but wire this up to make it work. So you got to do a little thinking to figure out what I have to do to wire this up. But you're like ninety percent of the way there. You just got to add some stuff. So do that.